Hello everyone, welcome to this first video on operations management. So we'll kick off with some introductory concepts so that we're in the same page when we go through rest of the chapters. So operations broadly uh, defines activities which directly relates to producing a good or a service. So lots of examples of this, tangible items such as furniture, uh, your computer, laptop, cars, bicycle, so they will be regarded or classified in the category of goods. On the other hand, services such as hospitality, hospitals, customer care, uh, when you go to a restaurant, then there's a combination of goods and services. So any intangible item will fall in the service category. So next comes the management. Under OM, operations management, we classify management activities into four key areas. Let's take an example of any good or service. For example, let's say Starbucks. Uh, so for Starbucks, under planning activities, you can think of planning for opening a new restaurant, which would be a longer term planning. New product planning, so which product we need to launch so that we are still competitive. So in the coming chapter, you will see we'll discuss planning activities into three key categories. Longer term planning, where we talk about capacity planning, then medium term planning, which is producing a master production schedule, then shorter term planning, such as scheduling, then organizing, which is ensuring that all the ingredients, such as staff, machines, tools, raw material, and any other supplies which are required to run your operations are available when those are required. So next comes directing and controlling. So directing and controlling ensures that your operations are running smoothly. Uh, one example you can think of when you go to shopping and sometimes you see there are only few tails open because the queues are not very long. Well, as you start building up queues, uh, then there are more tails are open. So that's kind of directing the operation. And what we're trying to control is we're trying to control uh, the queue length so that there are not too many people waiting uh, in order to ensure a higher customer service level is achieved. So in the upcoming chapters, we're going to come to lots of examples around these four areas. Putting this together, so OM is the management of processes that create goods or services. So why we need to do this? In order to be efficient and effective. So when we talk of efficiency, we are mainly focusing on minimizing the cost and the delivery time, so which means doing things quicker with the fewer resources. Effectiveness mainly uh, focuses on quality of the goods and services. Both of these are important. The operation can be very efficient, which means producing goods and services at a very low cost and very quickly. However, if the quality is compromised, then we can say operation is not effective. You can observe this on, uh, especially when you go to the fast food restaurants. Sometimes these restaurants, they serve you very quickly, but they may mix up your orders. They may serve you a different drink. So in that case, the effectiveness is compromised. So that's kind of our target. What we want to do to operations management. We want to produce more with less time, uh, with using fewer resources, less workforce, and at high quality. As we go through the rest of the chapters, we'll keep on adding these aspects to ensure the operations are more efficient and effective. So in order to explore this a little bit further, let's look at a very simple example of operations management activity in a service organization and in a manufacturing firm. So here I have listed some activities which belongs to operations management. And we have a service company such as an airline and a manufacturing firm, uh, in this case, a bicycle factory. So I will walk through the activities that belongs to an airline. Then you guys can give it a go on the bicycle factory and reach me out if you have any questions. So forecasting is a planning activity. So in this case, uh, airline might want to look into demand of flights on a particular route. So, in order to fulfill the demand of these flights, we need to have uh, have some capacity. So, capacity will be measured in terms of planes. So, how many planes we need? 
right? And what's the capacity of each plane, right? Depending on the route and the demand on a particular route, you will decide on the capacity in terms of how many planes, the plane size, so on. It can go into further more details, such as how many staff members you need. So knowing capacity at a higher level doesn't serve the purpose of the operations. So scheduling entails uh, such as flight schedule, uh, maintenance schedule, your staff schedule, so on, right? So looking into details, what will happen at what time and who will do it, right? So later in one of the chapters, we'll talk about scheduling in more detail. So at the same time, we need some material in order to uh, run our operations. So on day-to-day -day operations, you can think of food items, vaporages, uh, which are part of a flight service. So those inventories needs to be managed. Uh, we talk about maintenance schedule. So we may need spare parts and other supplies to maintain um, our aircrafts and uh, other equipment that is in use. So those inventories needs to be maintained. Uh, the next aspect is of quality control. The quality of customer service. Uh, we need to make sure that flights are leaving on time. Maintenance is done on time. In-flight service quality. So those are some of the aspects of quality with an airline company. You may have other items too here. So please feel free to add, add that. Going beyond uh, that what directly relates to service, you have some other aspects such as motivating employees, where to locate the facilities, which plays an important part. Uh, in my experience, uh, some organizations, they will leave uh, the human aspect out of the operation or they simply neglect it. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good your equipment is, how good your process is. But if it's executed by, uh, by humans, uh, so the employee training becomes an important part in all phases of operation. Because without training, employees may make more mistakes. They will not be able to execute operations effectively. The next thing is where to locate the facilities. The location will make a difference on quality and cost of your operations. Uh, for instance, basing your operations on an airport which is on a less busiest route uh, will be more cost effective, but you may not be able to produce a high quality service due to less connections available from a less busy airport. Now it's your turn. You can take your turn on a bicycle factory where you can look into the operations for a bicycle factory and start filling out the rest of this table. So the next question is why we need to look into operations management. Operations management is the area that directly relates to producing these goods or services, so which means most of the expenses occurs in operations management area. So the idea here is you want to make it more effective and efficient so that the profitability can be increased by reducing the cost. Loss of jobs exist in OM area either directly or indirectly related to operations management. So here are some examples purchasing manager, uh, purchasers, quality control manager, uh, planners, uh, scheduling guys. So they all work to ensure the operations are running effectively and efficiently. Activities in all other areas, they interrelate with OM, finance, human resources, marketing, and so on. So we'll explore this in the coming slides where we look into the different functions within the organization and how they support operations management. So operations innovations lead to marketplace and strategic benefits. So as um, most of the work is done in the operations area where you're transforming goods and services. So any innovations that directly relate to operations in terms of product design, process design, process improvement has direct impact on productivity by improving the product quality or by reducing the cost. So these innovations provide a unique place to the organization in, in a competitive environment. We will explore some of these in the coming chapters. I want to stop this video here. So I'll see you in the next video when we talk about different function areas within the organization and how they relate to operations.